We're going to talk about discrete Fourier transforms and specifically thinking about difference equations, which are the discrete version of differential equations. They're looking at differences in sequences. And what we want to understand is how to produce uh, a way to represent LTI solutions in this space of difference equations. So what we want to think about like we thought about previously in the continuous case, if you look back a few lectures, we talked about looking at systems of differential equations with LTI and their representation in the Fourier domain. We're going to do the same thing here with systems of difference equations, and we're going to consider this in the context of the finite time uh, Fourier transform. So here is a generic representation of a set of difference equations. So it's some coefficient a of k, y of n minus k, where k is the delay, right? So the output signal y is delayed from 0 to n, right? So if it's delayed 0, that means you're at the current y of nth point. But if as n is 1, it's n minus 1. As n is 2, it's n minus 2. So you can have a series of delays here, and, um, and you have up to n of them. And each one of the delays is weighted with some a of k. Similarly, you have at the input signal, the x also is a difference equation, which is delayed by some k with coefficients b of k, and it has a total of m delays. And n and m, the capital N and capital M, can be different. But this is just a very general representation. And one of the things that we're going to try to uh, learn here is how do I compute the impulse response of a system like this? So in other words, how do these inputs x map to y. What's the fundamental response of the system I'm looking at if this is in fact the governing equations mapping me from the input x to the output y. So before we get too far along, let's remind ourselves that if we want to look at input versus output relations, we do normally think like this. We'd say my output is the impulse response times the input itself. And if you Fourier transform this, what you find is then y is the, this is now the multiplication in the Fourier domain of the input signal, it's Fourier transform, and the fundamental response uh, Fourier transform. You just multiply them together and that's it. So there's this very important property of convolution, which we talked about in the last lecture. Here it is. And so now you can see that the h is sitting right here. But in the difference equations I showed you, I don't know what the h is. And so what I'd like to try to find out is by looking at the input to output pairing, can I actually produce for you the fundamental response? Of course, the answer is yes, because that's why we're talking about it. Uh, so here, from this formula here, you can just say, see the h is just y over x. And so what I'm going to do is try to produce this quotient here, y over x, and that's going to give me the representation in the Fourier domain, at least, of the impulse response. So let's start off here with this system. And let's go ahead and go forward and just try to take the system and when all else, uh, when in doubt, just Fourier transform something. That's kind of like almost like a, a theorem you could write down. I'm not sure what to do. How about you Fourier transform it? Okay, so you don't have to think that hard. Just go ahead and Fourier transform this. And so when you Fourier transform this, check out what you have here. You have your output signal, input signal, and the Fourier transform of difference equations. Every time there's a delay, you pick up a e to the negative i omega. So if there's delayed twice, you get e to the minus 2i omega. Delayed three times, e to the minus 3i omega. So here is what you pick up. So in the continuous case, this is like a derivative. You pick up an i omega factor in front, <coughs> but for the discrete case, you pick up a negative i k omega out front, depending on k is the number of delays. So you're going to go, so this formula here, the a of k's are here, and every delay you get, you pick up a factor of e to the negative i omega times y. Same thing on the right side. Here's the x signal, and every time there's a delay, you pick up e negative e to the i omega, and so and k is the number of delays. So We've moved from the street time into the Fourier domain right here. So we Fourier transform both sides. Very easy to do difference equations um, with, a Fourier, with the discrete Fourier transform. And here's the representation that you have right here for it. 
What we're going to do with this formula, by the way, is now we're going to collect all the terms together. Notice that y itself can come out of the sum. Same thing with x here. It can come out of the sum because they are no longer functions of k. So we can just pull them out out front. And we can pull them out out front, in fact, and divide the y, uh, the left side here. In fact, let's do it here. I'm going to pull the y out of here, and I'm going to divide by both sides by x, and then divide both sides by this sum that's lower, left over here, and this is what we're going to see here. So when we do this, the h, which is y over x, is just the sum over the b of k's from 0 to m times this phase factor, and the a of k's from 0 to n times the e of k, e to the negative i k omega. So there you go. What we've just produced is a representation of the Fourier transform of the fundamental response. So if I want to get the fundamental response from this equation, I just have to invert this Fourier transform, right? Go from h, which is in the Fourier domain, back to the regular discrete time domain. So let's work out an example to show how this works in practice. So here's a very simple discrete time equation with differences, which is y of n, y of n minus 1, and on the right side it's x of n. So my output has one delay, my input is just x of n. So what we're going to do is Fourier transform both sides. So when we Fourier transform both sides, this y goes to y, this y here, it's one delay. It picks up an e to the negative i omega because of the delay y and a. And then on the right-hand side, you just have x. So now I just solve. I can pull out a common factor of y here and divide by both sides by x. And here's what you find. y over x is 1 over 1 minus a e to the negative i omega. So now what I can do, this is actually just h, right? So that's the, that's the point. So this is h. And if I want to find now the impulse response for this ex example, all I have to do is look on my discrete Fourier transform table, and what you find is that this thing here, through inversion, h of n is a of n, u of n. I've just solved this problem in some sense. So now I have the output y's, I have the input x's, and now I've just discovered for myself what the impulse response is by doing this process of Fourier transforming both sides and looking at the quotient y over x. Okay, it's sort of as simple as that. In many ways, very much like what we did when we did the continuous time case, you just Fourier transform both sides and you can write down h in the Fourier domain and just do an inversion to get the solution back out. So let's do a little harder example. And here's the example we're gonna consider. Y of n, it's got one delay here, which is a factor of negative 3 fourths, second delay, plus 1 eighths, and on this right-hand side, 2x to n. So what you can do is Fourier transform. So the Fourier transform of y of n is just 1. Fourier transform with one delay, you get this negative 3 fourths. One delay gives you a negative e to the minus i omega, so that's what's here. The two delays here is e to the negative 2i omega, and there's a factor of an eighth, which is here. All of these have a factor of y, which I've pulled out front. On the right side, all the way over here, I just get 2x. Okay, So I have everything in the Fourier domain. And so if I solve for y over x, here's what you get. 2 over this quotient, or sorry, this uh, set of uh, terms here. And so now I've got myself in the Fourier domain. And this is actually h, right? So if I can inverse the transform here, I would actually have what the fundamental response of the system is. So some tricks we're going to play. We're not, going to, we're not quite ready to do partial fractions yet because partial fractions is the big trick that you're going to be using typically with Laplace transforms, Fourier transforms. Because once you're in that space, you want to be able to separate this out so it looks like it's on one of the table of uh, discrete time uh, Fourier transform integrals. Okay, And so first, uh, before partial fractions, we're actually going to factor this out into two pieces. In fact, this here is a factor into 1 minus 1 half e to the minus omega, 1 minus a fourth e to the negative, negative i omega. So now I've got it in the form where I'm ready to do partial fractions, which is to separate this term from this term. And you can do that, and here's what you get. So once you do the partial fractions, you get a factor of 4 in front of this term, 
and a factor of minus two in front of this term. So there's a bit of algebra to go from here to here, but it's still not that hard to do. And the point is that once you have it in here in this form, this partial fractions form, both of these are sitting directly on the discrete Fourier transform table. And so you can immediately invert this to write down the solution for H. So there is our result. You go look at this up on the discrete time Fourier transform table. You look this up on the discrete time Fourier transform table, and here's what you find. These are the results. So what we've just done is we've essentially looked at this difference equation, Fourier transforming both sides, found the quotient y over x, which is the <coughs> Fourier domain of h, and then we've inverted it, and this is the solution now. This Well, what? not the solution. This is, in fact, the impulse response for that system. So that's how you solve these difference equations. You're just going to do the discrete time Fourier transform and use the fact that every delay picks up an e to the negative i omega. And once you have that, you have the solution <coughs> in the Fourier domain that you just have to invert at that point to get your uh, impulse response of your LTI system. So powerful technique, very easy to use. And again, you want to place everything, if you can, into the Fourier domain table, uh, Fourier transform table, so that you can easily invert it from there.